All right, welcome and happy new year to everyone. My name is Nicole Witham. I'm the statewide coordinator for the WSU Food Systems Program. This uh, somewhat new program for Washington State University delivers multidisciplinary expertise across academic, research, and extension. Uh, we work to provide specialized resources for farmers and food systems contributors. We seek to work with communities throughout the state to foster viable farm businesses, optimize sustainable natural resource stewardship, and to promote scaled processing and distribution. Of course, always in the pursuit of healthy food for all. Uh, I work um, as the program coordinator. Uh, one of my tasks is to help uh, convene the WSU Food Systems team, which is a collection of researchers, academics, and extension faculty and staff, as well as critical external partners such as the Washington State Farmers Market Association, the WSDA, PCC Farmland Trust, Tilth Alliance, Conservation Districts, uh, so on and so forth. We have many partners, and our team is around 65 members at this point. This team collaborates to provide specialized resources for farmers and food systems contributors. Um, and today we have a food systems um, team member. She's also our project coordinator, or excuse me, project manager for the food systems program. Her name is Abba Kaiser, and she works to um, organize and hold a really cool event that we put on every year called the Cascadia Grains Conference. So today she is going to be giving us um, a look into the work that she has done to continue to hold this conference and the other movements that have formed from it. She will also give us a little bit of a picture into what we call food systems innovation events, which are other, um, other events that are similar to this. So I'm gonna hand it off to Abba and welcome. Great, thanks Nicole. And thank you to everyone who has joined. I can see uh, all, most of your names and I recognize some of you. Uh, it's wonderful that Grish has joined. Um, I'm, I've never met you actually, but I'm excited that you're here and please correct me if I uh, say anything that was, that, that could benefit from your uh, historical experience with the Cascadia Experience Conference. Uh, I also have been just recently uh, stalking the Tafani Bakehouse, so I'm glad to see that there's a local uh, micro bakery on the call as well. Uh, as Nicole said, my name is Abba Kaiser, and I have the great pleasure of coordinating the Cascadia Grains Conference. I have been involved with the conference for the past four years and inherited the role from Rose Burke, who was the coordinator before me. And I'm going to switch to my presentation here. And if at any point during this um, time that if you have a question, there's a little raise hand icon down at the bottom right of the screen. And Nicole, is that right? That's the one to use or should they use the chat? Yeah, please feel free to use the raise hand icon. And also it's usually just very helpful if you would like to just do a chat. And then we can respond to those questions and we have plenty of time for discussion. So if anyone does have um, questions along the way throughout ABBA's presentation, please feel free to um, send that in the chat and we can take a minute to pause. Great. Thanks, Nicole. So this is going to be a brief uh, slideshow, mostly centered around the Cascadia Grants Conference, but also to tell you a little bit more about myself uh, and some of the other projects that we're working on that are based off of the Cascadia Grains Conference model. So as um, Nicole said, I'm the project manager for the Food Systems Program, and we're a statewide program. Um, we all happen to live on the Olympic Peninsula, so we have an office here, but we work statewide to convene uh, folks across the value chain in different sectors, and for me specifically, that means 
working in the small grains world. So just a little bit about me. Can you guys all see that? Hello, my name is Abba Kaiser screen. Just want to make sure that's coming up there. I see it just fine, Abba. Okay, great. So uh, I was born in Virginia. I uh, moved out to Washington in 2006 to go to the University of Washington for their Comparative History of Ideas program and found out that uh, it was, wasn't the best fit for me. So I, I transferred to uh, Evergreen and finished up with a degree in what I like to call integrated media in 2010. Um, so working collaboratively in small groups uh, to create performances and projects, different events that had to do with um, uh, systems theory and thinking, talking about the healthcare system, talking about farming and, and food systems and creating events around that. Uh, and then always uh, for me having um, one foot in the art as well. Um, I moonlight as a musician. My moniker is Abacus. You can see one of my little posters down in the bottom corner there. Uh, and after college, I went to the School for Designing a Society, which is um, an organization in Urbana, Illinois. And they uh, were taught by the godfather of, of systems theory, Herbert Grun, who uh, helped found the school. And so with that, I also started doing event planning and working more of my wooden farm uh, passion into my musical career and tried to do these events that were that featured live food and local music uh, as a as a comprehensive experience for people. And after that, I got a job working with Laura uh, Lewis. You can see her in the top uh, left hand corner of that photograph of Nicole and, and Laura and I. And I uh, worked for WSU Extension in Jefferson County here for several years as the farm tour coordinator and as the assistant coordinator to Cascadia Grains and eventually moved into being the farm coordinator of the conference. And the conference itself moved into the WSU food systems statewide realm when Laura got the statewide leader position and took it with her from WSU Jefferson County Extension. So that's sort of the overview of how I came to be a part of this team and how the conference came to live in the food systems program. It was started by Lucas Patsick uh, and he was a grad student of the Bread Lab who was looking for a similar model to uh, the grain gathering that was centered around producers in Thurston County. Uh, he was looking for, I think, a different price point and um, looking to continue the model in a more in an accessible way uh, in the in the region. And he also worked with Rose Burke, my uh, mentor and the former project manager of the conference. And Rose was the coordinator for the first four years, and she created the systems that I'm still using today in terms of organizing the steering committee, in terms of reaching out for donations and sponsorship, and um, many other things. I definitely still lean on her as a resource. She's still on our steering committee, which is great to have the continuity. And uh, now she's a mother of a three-year-old and twins, so she's a little bit busy. Um, and I want to back up for a second and, and talk a bit about the Cascadia Grains Conference and how it's um, become framed in our programming, the realm that I manage in our WSU food systems program is called, are called, they're called food system innovation events. And so all of these have similar themes and we'll talk about these a little bit later too. But if you look in the yellow box here, this is kind of the bare bones of what creates, uh, what are the mission statements of these food system innovation events. And right now, the Cascadia Grains Conference is our biggest food system innovation event. And the goals are to connect and convene growers, processors, brokers, investors, and policymakers across the value chain uh, to provide a platform for the latest science, techniques, research, market opportunities, and hands-on learning, and to cultivate an economically viable network from market opportunities for locally sourced and value-added products. So that's sort of big picture food system innovation events. 
And that model, we are talking with other partners in other realms about taking this model and bringing it to the meat world, bringing it to um, more specifically into certain grains world. Like um, yeah, we're talking about having a quinoa symposium, and we'll get to stuff, those things later. Um, but I just want to give you a broad sense of where this lives in our programming and how we're thinking about it uh, moving forward. And a couple other things about the Cascadia Grains Conference. It was started in 2013. It was held in Tacoma for the first three years. It transferred to the Jefferson County Extension Office when Lucas Patsick, um, one of the founders, left uh, for a new job in California. Laura Lewis, who's um, my boss, has been the chair for four years. And it continues to be in Olympia, Washington since 2014. We have a major partners with the city of Tumwater and the, all the investments and private public partnerships that they have with uh, creating a brewing and distilling curriculum through the South Puget Sound Community College. And they're also rehabbing the old brew house down in um, Olympia, Tumwater to be an incubator for small businesses, for breweries and distilleries, and to integrate that with some of the research that's already being done down there in Thurston County. So here we are. We are about two weeks out from our biggest event of the year, the Cascadia Greens Conference. We have a draft program announced on our uh, on our website. And let me see if this is a good time to share my screen with you so we can go through the website. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to switch gears really quick here. Um, before I do that, or while I'm doing that, does anybody have any questions so far? You can raise your hand or you can type it into the chat. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we are going to just take a look at the website really quick. All right. So the Cascadia Grains Conference, this is our brand new website that Nicole helped us create. And uh, you can see here on the right hand side, these are our two major, the two major things that happen during the weekend are the Friday field trips and the Saturday conference. Uh, so the Friday field trips are uh, value added, hands on learning opportunities for people to delve into the different realms that we serve. So thinking about brewing and distilling, we are featuring uh, City of Tumwater and some of the breweries around there um, that are involved with the, this big overhaul of the historic brew house. You can see in the background of this photo here that, that this is the project. This is the, the old brew house that um, there's Heidi Becker-Cernway of the city of Tumwater talking to folks about um, the, really the multi-million dollar project that they're invested in um, in terms of bringing a uh, brewing and incubator lab to Tumwater. And what we try and do is find people who are doing that kind of work year round, that boots on the ground work, and really showcase and elevate what they're doing to revitalize a regional grain economy and, and support a local grain network. Um, so the breweries who are featured during this uh, tour are going to be Singing Hops Brewery and Sandstone Distillery, and we've also got Triceratops and Matchless Breweries who all work with Skagit Valley Malting, a regional malter, uh, to create local craft beer. And then we are moving on to the another field trip, hands-on baking field trip with Wild Bread, and um, you can read more about these um, at your will. Um, this one is going to be in collaboration with the Evergreen State College, another great partner who stepped up and said, hey, we think this is really great. We really want to support and be a part of this. Um, can we offer our space for a hands-on baking class? And so we're at this really cool tipping point where we're seeing a lot of people come forward interested in being a part of the movement. And our job is really just to get all the, uh, organize all the chaos in a formatted way so that people can um, see how it's all connected. And that's a big part of what I consider to be my job. Um, Grand Central Baking, another great partner. They're going to be teaching a hands-on baking class uh, at the South Puget Sound Community College on that same Friday. So these are all on Friday. It's kind of a choose-your-own-adventure. And the um, what they make for the focaccia will be served for breakfast the next day on Saturday and at the South Puget Sound Community College. 
um, working with WSU Thurston County. This is an equipment field trip for Com Basic for farmers. And they are doing a lot of really cool research on flavor analysis, uh, single malt uh, whiskeys, and we're really excited to continue to work with them and feature the work that they're doing in 2020. And this is a very specific, a deep dive into combine equipment and the kind of screens that you need, um, and it's really producer focused. Also in collaboration with the South of the Sound Community Farm Land Trust. Uh, another field trip, which is really exciting, new this year. We've never had a field trip in Seattle before, and the London Plain is a wonderful restaurant that already works a lot with a locally sourced um, fair, and they're not afraid to walk the walk, as we say. And in collaboration with another partner of ours, the Curry Breeding Network, Elaine Selman is our food coordinator for the conference, and she's uh, involved in sourcing the grains locally and talking about the how the terroir affects the taste of the grains and what they're paired with and how that affects flavor and and um, farmers will be there to talk about how it affects uh, breeding as well so that's going to be a really cool event it's also we're also going to be uh, premiering a beer that we're making in collaboration with link malt and Fremont brewing at this event uh, so that the uh, specifically for Cascadia grains, they're making a beer called the, um, I believe it is the 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 terroir of Cascadia or the taste of Cascadia. I, I think the grains, grains of Cascadia. Of Thank you. Grains of Cascadia. And we'll be we'll be uh, putting that out there soon in a in a lot of with a lot of press. So keep an eye out for that. Um, also, a, a couple other partners of ours and another tasting. This one is specifically focused on heritage uh, wheats and the beer that they can make. Uh, some of our friends at the Palouse Heritage out um, in eastern Washington have been really working hard to uh, learn about the historical context of specific varieties and bring them back in small rotation to an area that has just massive amounts of commodity wheat being grown. And so they're bringing back the story, they're bringing back the history, and this is a really great opportunity to um, collaborate with uh, not only the Palouse Heritage folks, but also the Grain Shed, which is uh, doing really cool work uh, in Spokane. And they're a brewery, they're also a bakery, they are fully integrated in terms of how they think about grain and waste and um, moving this very um, small batch, very niche uh, grain through in, and into a value added system. Um, and the breweries that they already work with are, are going to come and showcase some of the heritage beers as well. Propolis Brewing from our very own Port Townsend and Three Magnets Brewing as well from Olympia. Um, if you guys haven't checked out the Grain Shed, I'm just going to click on their website really quickly. It is such a cool thing and um, they're really doing, this is a perfect example of the folks that we're interested in supporting. Um, and their website's taking a while to load, so you can look at it later, but check out the grainshed.coop. It's a really cool thing. So those are our Friday field trips, and each one is really its own separate event with its own separate set of needs and um, uh, insurance needs and, and budget. Uh, we really treat them all separately, but we try and tie them all together in this in a cohesive way to show that it's all part of the same conference, all part of the same movement. And we're at a great point, like I said, a tipping point really where we're seeing all these people coming forward and trying to ask ourselves what a sustainable way for us to manage all of these events is if this event, if this movement is really going to continue to grow and be a regional, uh, regional event. So those are the Friday field trips. And then here is the Saturday conference. So it's been hosted at the South Puget Sound Community College for the past four years. It's on Saturday, January 19th, uh, again, this year in Olympia. And the theme this year is the terroir of grains. Um, so trying to uh, talk about the nuances and flavor profiles that are created uh, growing the same grain in different regions. Our registration is now live. Please come. Please join us. Please tell your friends. We still have space available. And this is our draft agenda for the conference. Um, this one doesn't have any of the speakers in it, but you can see kind of the general, uh, the breadth of the, of the 
topics that we're trying to address. So everything from uh, a producer's panel to vertical integration in co-ops to equity in the grain system and a big focus this year on malting because of the um, research that's being done across the state and the potential for us to be really thinking about uh, malt in terms of uh, more like a grape than a uh, been a, a commodity that doesn't have any flavor or identity. Uh, and I have to give Adam Foy credit for that. Uh, he was the one who first said that to me, and it makes a lot of sense, and it helps helps people orient in terms of thinking about grain as and beer and distilled spirits as we've thought about wine, wine and how um, there are huge implications for flavor profiles and quality analysis that we're just now tapping into. Um, along with many other partners across the state. So this is our uh, general overview of what we have planned for Saturday. It's a full uh, full day, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. The other thing I'll mention about it is that we're having a really cool uh, session on at, at the end of the day in lieu of a fifth session we have created um, an actual study that we're going to perform at the conference with attendees to do some of that flavor and aroma analysis that I mentioned uh, through with in conjunction with the Sustainable Seed Systems Lab, and as well as other um, other partners. Adam Foy with the with Skagit Valley Malting is going to have a beer tasting with single malt, single hop beer, so you can taste the difference. Uh, and the only difference there is the the malts that have been used. So um, the other thing to mention that's exciting is that we're doing a local grain dinner as well. So we're sourcing local grains from Natchez, um, from the Sustainable Seed Systems Lab, from Finn River, and we're going to be implementing that into our meals for the conference. And that's included in the cost of the conference. Also, uh, don't forget the best of Cascadia tasting at the end of the day. So. Lots of good stuff, um, lots of interactive hands-on classes. We have baking classes as well. Uh, and um, we hope that you guys can join us. These are some other aspects of the conference. Um, keynote speaker is going to be Jason Parker, who is the 2018 Craft Distiller of the Year. And he owns Copperworks Distilling in Seattle. And he's definitely walking the walk in terms of uh, using and promoting local grains. And um, is just a huge advocate for the movement right now. We're really excited to have him on board. Uh, we have a resource expo as well for nonprofits, government agencies, and sponsors. As I mentioned, the best of Cascadia tasting. So at the end of the day, we have these amazing local pours. Um, we're going to have uh, some really exciting breweries show up this year. Um, and as always, we try and keep this conference accessible. It's only $115 for the day, which includes all three meals and beverages. And uh, we also have scholarship and work trade applications available as well. So I'm going to head back to this. Uh, does anyone have any questions before we go over back to my little PowerPoint here? OK, great. Nils asks, do you know if there's any sort of list out there of particular grains that someone would like grown? in terms of uh, end users, end user markets. Is that what you mean? Yeah, that's a great question. And one that we're continually asking ourselves. Um, one thing to mention is that this conference is completely funded from the ground up. We do not get any hard line funding from the university to put on this event, and so between the ticket sales and the sponsorships that I raise, there's really not much left over for any kind of research that allows for us to be doing more, um, like creating uh, resources like this. Um, I know that there are a ton of other folks in nationally who have created different formats. Um, Last year, what we tried to do with registration was to create a regionalized grain network survey, so getting a sense of what kind of technology people would use, um, what their needs are, and how, how we can best serve them as the food systems program. And we've gotten uh, about 100 responses, which is not a lot. And we also have learned about a couple of other efforts that have been going on 
uh, across the nation to create a more cohesive network. And so at this point, um, you, you know, we also, I should mention, have know about models like a, just a simple list serve where folks in Northern California uh, talk to each other all the time about who's got this grain. You know, um, mostly it's farmers talking to each other about uh, different pieces of, of advice, different varieties, um, different uh, problems that they're having. But that's definitely something that we would love to help facilitate. We're just still trying to gather more information about what kind of uh, platform or method would actually be used. And you know, with that group in California, that started out as a big group, and now it's just a, a, probably about five farmers who are all just sharing growing information uh, instead of connecting to end markets necessarily. Um, but the conversation is ongoing, and the lack of funding is real. And I think it's um, you know, something that we all probably as resource providers struggle with. Um, but I think at this point, we're still gathering information about the most effective way to uh, be of service and um, not let it die out. Um, I see that some people are typing. So add I'll just also, um, I would add also just to that question, Nils, it may not be exactly the answer, um, but there is some information that we gather through registration um, to create even our end summary report for the year that does indicate what people are interested in growing. Um, and you might even have some of that, some of those graphs, graphs in your upcoming presentation, app, but I'm not sure. But we do have a yeah. certain amount of information about what people are interested in. Um, it seems like on the baking side or the brewing and distilling side, it would be really interesting to know what those um, sectors are interesting, interested in producers growing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, okay, great. Terry, that's a great resource. Um, in the chat, the Artisan Grain Collaborative is doing some really cool work. Um, the and they are in, they have like a live Google map of anyone who wants to join and say hey yeah I'm a part of this national network. Um, the other resource that I'll share right now is the Appalachian um, Appalachian Staple Foods Collective, and I hope that this is not going to just take you to my. Uh, profile, but let me share this link with you. Um, they have funding, grant funding, to uh, be creating a comprehensive network that is centered around the Appalachian Stable Foods, but is nationwide and interactive. And uh, you can see profiles of different people and what they're, what they're interested in and what they need, what, they're, what they can provide and what they need. Um, so if that didn't work, let me know. Um, sometimes it just takes you to the profile of the person who sent it. So I'm just trying to make sure you're not in my profile and you guys could actually add to it if you want. So yeah, really exciting stuff happening nationally. And we're just trying to keep our finger on the pulse of what's happening at this point. You know, it's funny because as the conference approaches, you find out about all of these different initiatives and really it could be a full-time job just keeping track of who's, who's involved. Um, and for us, we are trying to be really clear about the conference being a, um, well, there we go, Tafani Bakehouse. Great. Uh, yeah, let's talk after. I know a local source for malted rye for sure. Um, but even that, you know, the, uh, the matchmaking work uh, is, um, is a really important piece, and it's very place specific. And as statewide resource providers, we're constantly trying to balance uh, you know, serve, cr helping birth and create sustainable models for these regional networks that are going to be able to survive without our involvement one day, hopefully. Um, and to, and that's just a constant struggle because there's there's so much work to be done and it's such a heavy lift right now. But we're also at this very exciting time where people are just starting to catch on to local grains as the last piece of the local food movement, which is really exciting. Uh, another model that I'll mention, um, just because we have such a great partner with them, is the Grow NYC Green Markets uh, in New York City. They have a, a person named June Russell who's been involved in creating legislation in the farmers markets in New York City that says you have to have 
15% whole New York grain grown uh, flour to be a part of our farmers markets, which immediately created the need for local grains, which then in turn changed the entire uh, economy of local grains in New York City. And so we're seeing people with the, with the California grain campaign who are doing uh, similar work. They want to beat out New York. So they're saying 20% 20, 20 whole local grains by 2020. Uh, and that's their campaign. Um, and getting the farmers markets involved is a huge asset. And thanks, Nicole. She just put the the link in the chat there for you guys if you want to see the Grow NYC uh, website. And so there's many ways to do this, and it's at at the um, at the it's sort of funny because you know you think that you want to create this comprehensive network, and then you just realize that you're creating another network that is maybe du duplicative or, or redundant. And so trying to trying to figure out a smarter, not harder way to link all of these efforts and then also stay focused on this very real hands-on experience that people can have with the constituency in the Northwest by coming to the conference. And this hands-on face-to-face experience is really valuable for networking and having these conversations. And it's really just a, a nice way to touch down throughout the year for people who are doing this work year round. And that's um, something that we're definitely committed to providing. And I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. Unless, does anybody else have any other questions? Before we move on. Eight. Okay. So going back to some of the numbers from the Cascadia Grains, this is our um, last six years. The Saturday conference has more than doubled, and uh, we continue to see a lot of new participants every year. We're shocked at how many new people are coming uh, in. And like last year, 64% of attendees were new to the conference. So it's really cool that we get to be a lot of people's first experience of this movement. And we really have tried this year especially to create uh, a, a really easy entry point for people who are just getting involved. So um, this is horrible, a horrible slide. But um, <laughs> if you get your magnifying glass out, and zoom in. I think there's a zoom in button on your screen um, to the left there. Uh, and I can send this out too for anybody who's interested. Um, this is our uh, beginner's track. I just want to call your attention to the purple column and I can read it out. So we, we've got intro to cereal farming, malting 101, uh, the geography of world grain systems, talking about how grain has traveled over time and how the cultural importance of grain uh, ties into the um, region and the sustainability for, for the people who actually um, for, eat it. And then um, a direct marketing and social media uh, track as well. And we're still uh, whittling down uh, the sessions here, but this is our way of trying to really invite, especially younger folks, into the conversation that can seem like uh, it's hard to know where to start when people are talking about uh, uh, things in a very advanced way. Um, and we also want to create those kinds of spaces for people who have been involved, for farmers who need the information, and people who, are, who have um, been doing the work. But we definitely want to make sure that we are offering that beginner's track as well. Uh, for some reason, I oh, they just you just scroll down there. Okay, great. This is a little graphic of. Uh, um, okay, great question. I will get to that in a second. Um, the participant occupations. Um, we believe that a lot of folks are not considering are are actually consumers, and that's the other slash not identified folks in this graph here, at the top left. And so we put another uh, consumer um, identification tab on our uh, survey this year, and we continue to see that the biggest the biggest groups of people who attend are farmers and ranchers, 
and or processors. And processors are broken down into brewers, bakers, millers, distillers, and maltsters. Um, after that, we have support organizations, um, which include resource providers uh, and government officials. And uh, then from there, we have uh, researchers and educators and then uh, retailers. So um, those, that's just a loose breakdown from last year's great quote here from Richard Sherman of Blues Heritage. You can see Eduardo Jordan from June Baby and uh, Solare, and this is uh, William Myers from Joseph's Granary at the Cascadia Grains Conference. And so it's just a great place for folks to rub elbows with each other and get to know, you know, what challenges different people are facing in sectors. And where we an, another big part of the conference is that we try and provide those networking opportunities for people to talk across their um, across their professional experience. Um, okay, I'm going to go to Terry's question. Have you all thought about adding a component that would be geared toward the general public? I think there would be people who might be interested as eaters, drinkers, but who aren't producers or brewers. Maybe it could just stand be a standalone event tied to the conference. Yeah, that's a great idea. And I, it's a really challenging uh, question to think about how to get folks involved without um, but I, I think that you know there are specific ways to do it like uh, you know a craft brew to take over that single malt hop uh, or um, this these events these Friday events at London Plain and um, yeah, that's that's great, Terry. Yeah, I would, I'd love to talk to you more about that because that is a huge thing that farmers say too. It's, you know, we can grow the stuff, we just need a market for it now. So creating consumer awareness and education is huge. And I think that the bakers especially are showing up right now as the um, folks who are making it look sexy, making it look really good. And people can respond to that. They can get into that. Um, and uh, the same with the brews. So I think that, you know, you're right. The key to their hearts is, is a consumer eater drinker uh, um, experiences for people. And we, we've talked about doing these off-season events, one for each of the, the different sectors that we're trying to support. So one brewing and distilling event, one baking event. Um, we've talked with Mel Derbyshire at Essential Baking about doing, or sorry, at Grand Central Baking about doing a a bakery takeover and with Link Mall about doing a tap takeover and um, thinking also about doing an animal feed related uh, event because that's a huge sector that has potential for um, the sustainability aspect of this movement. And my connection is poor right now, apparently. Uh, but yeah, let's talk. Let's definitely talk, Terry. I'd love to hear your ideas and Again, we're at this tipping point where we're not going to be able to control this movement. And in some ways, it's a there is a, a TED talk, I think, where someone said, in order for something to grow, you have to lose a little bit of control. And so I think we're at this we're at that point where it's, we're seeing this huge wave of, of interest and um, people waking up to the market potential and the flavor potential of this movement. And it's really, really exciting. And, and we're continuing to ask ourselves this, the question of how can we support um, in a sustainable way without um, being absolutely necessary for the health of, of whatever it is that we're looking to support. Um, all right, going back to 2018 attendance, you can see Steve Lyon from the Bread Lab there. Uh, and you Again, get out your magnifying glasses. Sorry for the slide, but the biggest thing to take away from this is that the the most important uh, effect of the conference that people came for was for educational or professional development or to understand the sector better, just what's going on in this world. Um, and then the second biggest was networking, which is what we do. Creating the space for people to connect authentically is a big motto for me as an organizer. Uh, this is a big list of our 2019 Cascadia Green Steering Committee. So these are the folks that I've bothered throughout the year to give us advice and to approve our agenda. We meet once a month on the phone 
and uh, that's September through January, and we try to have at least one person from each of the sectors that we support um, in on the steering committee. And Nicole asks, Abba, can you uh, talk more about how and why we use a steering committee? Um, great. Uh, and for us, it's really important um, for me as an organizer, I'm uh, very humbled to the fact that I'm really just here as a convener. I'm not the person who can give meaningful input in terms of content. And while I've been involved in this movement for four years now, and I have some sense of who the players are, uh, we really rely heavily on these people to inform the programming um, to have oversight and to make sure that we're on the right track in terms of supporting a small scale niche market artisan grain economy here in the Northwest. And without these folks, really, we'd just be shooting in the dark and um, trying to figure out, you know, what works and what doesn't. And so having these people involved, um, you know, from Kevin Murphy with the Sustainable Seed Systems Lab to Jeremy Bunch with Shepherd's Grain to Mel Darbyshire of Grand Central Baking. You know, these are the folks that we can call up any time of day and say, ask for advice, ask for um, input on sessions, and um, that we really draw from their expertise to put this conference on. Really, I think about this conference as, this conference is really about these people. <laughs> We're just creating the space for them to fill. Um, and Nicole, I'm not sure if I answered your question or if you want to add anything to that. Abba, I just wanted to get give people a better understanding of how and why we use these groups to create the events that we create and that we'll be carrying um, this type of kind of organizational um, perspective into other events, which you may already you you may be moving on to talking about. Great. Let's see. Yeah. Yes. So right on cue, um, the conversation for the regional grain economy has, uh, we've seen a lot of folks who are showing up from the eastern side of the state. The Cascadia Grains Conference was started as a primarily west side focused, west of the Cascades focused event. Um, but the folks from the east side have been showing up pretty regularly and pretty consistently and saying, hey, we want to be a part of this. We you know, believe in uh, small niche markets. We believe in using rotational grains um, for healthier ecosystems and how can, you know, and we're doing it. We're, we are fulfilling the mission of what you guys are standing for. And so we decided to go and to Eastern Washington to say, hey, is this model something that could work? specifically for the place-based region in the east side and um, held a side pilot program in uh, Moscow, Idaho, which I'll talk about in a minute. And this also, if you look at the purple circle diagram up at the top, you can also see uh, sort of how I'm envisioning the, the year of this movement from our team's perspective. So we've got the Grains Conference in January coming up. We that this is an act. This is a diagram from from earlier, but having another East Side Grains Conference uh, sometime in August, and then these little off-season events throughout the year um, for baking, brewing, production, um, and processing. Uh, you can see some of our partners. Um, that's Bill Myers again from Joseph's Granary, and then that's our team there at Finn River um, with uh, members from OSA and the Culinary Breeding Network and Nashes, and then. June Russell's on the left there um, from NYC Green Markets. And we are setting up, I'll go back real quick. There we're setting up another uh, steering committee specifically for the East Side Conference in Moscow. So that's the um, on its way. Look out for more of that soon. This is um, just some press that we got on the left-hand side and, and another uh, event that we were involved with called Homegrown Malts, which was uh, a, basically a tap, uh, a, not a tap takeover. We were sort of uh, on the side of the regular bar at the 
Coog game uh, with a bunch of uh, single beers that were organized uh, in conjunction with Link Malt uh, that were all using WSU bread, lion barley. Uh, this is some, this is another uh, just little blurb of info from the East Side Conference. So again, working with that steering committee, we were able to uh, put on this event, which you can see these little pictures down below. We had the Dean, our Dean of Connors, Andre Gerard Wright, uh, from WSU, and then the dean from the U of I Agricultural and Life Sciences, Michael Perella. And if you know anything about the WSU and U of I rivalries or politics that exist, just the fact that these two were able to come together in the same room was a huge win for us and kind of uh, another indicator for us that, you know, our job is really to create this collaborative space. Uh, you can see again the magnifying glass, sorry everybody, but we did have like 50% folks from Whitman and 50% um, from Latah County. So a, a real good even split from Idaho and Washington. And then um, the professions again, um, we had producers and researchers and government state agencies along with uh, academics being the um, most attended at the East Side Pilot Program. This is just some really cool data I threw in here from Hallie Choi from the Sustainable Seed Systems Lab. We did a hot steep malt analysis. We're going to do the same thing or a similar model at the West Side Conference, but we actually had people do blind taste analysis and then uh, aggregated the data to show these little profiles of um, Lion, Copeland, and the Baroness Barley as well. Um, but going back to food system innovations events as a whole, uh, you know, working with this steering committee, gathering steering committee members and uh, putting together these calls um, and then moving forward with uh, a schedule that allows us to create content and do adequate promotion. Uh, oh, Terry was there and it was awesome on the East Side Conference. Great. Um, and these are the, the, the tenants of our, um, of the food system innovation events, the high quality educational events. We um, don't want to make sure that people learn something and, and uh, gain hands-on knowledge that they can directly apply to their operation, whether they're a bakery or a small farm, and providing resources and databases. So um, we've talked about publishing the attendee lists for the forthcoming conferences as a, a directory that people can use to contact each other and again, the transdisciplinary networking opportunities um, that we're actually going to be facilitating this year uh, for the Cascadia Grains West Conference. Uh, the, sorry, the slide got cut off, but again, the tenants of our innovation events, technology and innovation, what's coming up, what's new, what's happening, um, branding and marketing, so helping with the, uh, with social media, how to tell your story, um, how to reach your audience, what is market, uh, education and research, talking about new varieties that are coming out, the trials that are happening right here and now, where they're at in the process, and um, what's, uh, what, new, what new things are happening within the university and beyond. Uh, distribution and processing systems, talking about millers, talking about distribution companies, and um, how to uh, support the connectors of this movement. Uh, financial models and legal frameworks, we always try to have uh, some resource providers there. This year we have Craft3, um, the Thurston Economic Development Council, uh, and some other folks who are coming. Um, Jess Sarsfield is coming as well to be a part of a session on uh, financial uh, opportunities. And then we also have consumer education and end markets, which speaks to Terry's question about um, creating uh, better eaters and drinkers. Because um, if they don't know that there's a difference, why would they pay more for it? So that's another big part of what we do. Um, oh, weird. I'm sharing my screen still. Sorry about that. Let's see here. Uh, and then I just have one more slide, um, which is our upcoming events. So uh, the seventh annual Cascadia Grains Conference. Please come January 18th and 19th in Olympia, Washington. We still have space. Please share with your networks. We'd love to see you there and um, talk about how we can 
uh, do this better together. The first annual Cascadia Grains East, it's, the name is not going to be Cascadia Grains East, but um, name TBA will be July 12th and 13th in Moscow, Idaho, 2019. And then um, we're also going to be using um, the, the same model to be applied to uh, a regional meets conference, which we're still figuring out when the date is going to be. It's either going to be in the fall of this year or in 2020. And we're going to use the same model of gathering a steering committee, uh, having calls, uh, you know, fundraising uh, to talk about the same question, basically, of how do we make a regional meat economy work? Uh, and the biggest piece for uh, small meat producers um, to, uh, and niche market meat production, which is a huge, huge market and that has huge demand and already has a lot of consumer awareness. So it's a, um, a lot less heavy of a lift than the grains movement. Um, but again, working with the same uh, food system innovation events model to bring together a comprehensive program for people who are working on that, that uh, solution. The other thing to look out for is an international quinoa symposium, which we're going to be working on with the Sustainable Seed Systems Lab in 2020. And that's another WSU research lab that we work closely with. Kevin Murphy is um, a WSU researcher and is involved in a lot of uh, international quinoa research and is bringing a lot of folks to the table. And then the other project that we're, we've got in our back pocket is a, a farm tour toolkit. So I've also been the farm tour coordinator for the past four years here in Jefferson County and moving into the statewide realm, thinking about how to create a template for folks who want to be you know, farm tours happen in their area and not a one size fits all kind of a thing, but more of a, a timelines that they can base their process off of uh, ways to fundraise, creative sources of funding that they could consider um, and even media that they could use as templates for their maps and for online maps and things like that. So um, that's what's coming up in the future. And that is all I got. Um, I think it was another question here that I might have missed. Um, I don't know. It looks like everything's good. Terry, you and I can follow up at some point. And if there's, uh, does anybody have any other questions in general about the Regional Meets Conference or about any of our other events or um, about the Cascadia Grains Movement or the two conferences that are coming up? Thank you, Abba. Yeah. I, I would just also, oh, yeah, I would just like to let everyone know um, that you, can go to our website, uh, foodsystems.wcu.edu, um, and I will paste that right into the chat. Uh, feel free to go to that website to check out some other elements and things that are going on. Um, if you aren't already on our email list, please add yourself. It's a great way to stay in touch and up to date with announcements, not only from our own program, um, but from other WSU um, field days and events. So uh, again, if anyone else has any other questions, please feel free. We're going to just be wrapping up here otherwise. Is there anybody coming to the conference? Aside from Doug Collins, who's on the I see in in our group here. Heidi, are you going to be able to come? <laughs> nice. Awesome, everyone. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll see you next month.